welcome friends to another video in this video we'll be seeing how to install uh, InfluxDB and uh, uh, installation as well as the setup how to see that they have also a web page where you can you know customize uh, the database and see some, the, uh, some of the data out of it okay and that too will be installing that is on uh, CentOS uh, 7 plus because you have already installed if you have already seen you might have already seen the Grafana that is on CentOS 7 plus and this is also CentOS 7 okay there are a couple of other tools like telegraph influx db chronograph and capacitor uh, that was de developed by uh, influx db uh, group so we can just install these tools to see whether uh, how it is useful in the subsequent videos okay let's get started so we'll go to the uh, influx db website we can select uh, the linux one okay we can directly go to the download page and you can choose the latest version that is version is influx db 2 plus 0 2.0 and you can select uh, then a platform like red hat okay i don't think it's a arm i i don't think it's arm so i need to choose oh uh, okay the other one i guess so this won't work okay let's uh, try that at least so a uh, get w get it and uh, you can just uh, do the w get it should down it should download the rpm to my local machine oh, okay cat is not there i don't interested that is the old uh, command that i just executed by mistake okay oops okay let's see what is the um, machine uh, configuration let me first uh, try to get the machine uh, specifications like the OS and the CPU configuration and the memory that sort of thing okay you can do it like cat it is a message of the day and then pipe grip with memory or other uh, parameter okay as you can see OS is CentOS 7.7 .7. memory is 120 gigabyte and swap is also 126 gigabyte RAM. I think they're pretty cool. I think we can install the, the Influx TV with a minimum uh, 64 GB. It would be sufficient. I think 120 GB. Is, I think uh, that is also good. Okay, let's try to download the RPM and then try to install it. I just and already i am a root user I'm, I'm gonna just do yum local install that okay I, I that i was pointing out this is the architecture is not compatible this is not arm 64 so i'm just going to drop this rpm i'm going to choose the other one okay let's go i think it's not installed uh, so there is no point in just doing rpm qa so for uh, our satisfaction we can just uh, try that i am not it is not in, installed anyway okay so we'll just choose uh, the other one uh, the rpm that i was just talking about a uh, few, few uh, moments before yeah red hat centers okay w get we we'll do the same procedure again download it okay it's pretty quick pretty quick and okay okay I'm going to choose the first one the arm one we are going to discard that we do the same procedure yum in local install in flux tp okay to the two the rpm it is uh, on packaging it finding out the dependencies if any then you're trying to do the rpm installation okay and then come on why are you taking so much time it should be pretty quick Come on, okay. There is no dependencies uh, issues. It's good. Okay, press yes. Total size is 125 MB. I don't. I'm not going going to worry about that. Installation is pretty quick. Done. Okay, let's check the RPM that you were, you know, worrying about a few minutes before. Okay, RPM have been QA, then pipe grab in flux. Yes, this is the right this is the correct rpm that we have just installed it okay once the installation is done then let's see what are the other um, uh, that uh, collect data collector tools like telegraph you know capacitor 
that sort of RPM also let's install it together okay the latest version of telegraph is um, 1.18 similarly we'll do, we're going to change uh, select the red hat on CentOS and uh, we'll do the same procedure like double get it has been downloaded pretty quick 90 what is the size of that 250 MB I guess yes 250 MB telegraph we'll do the same yum install local install telegraph there you go finish no dependency yes it is going to take 80, 88 MB okay yeah there you go it's pretty quick installation is done the telegraph is also done this is not telegram it is telegraph okay let's check the rpm whether it is going to install or not rpm not ibh rpm hyphen qa i'm going to not going to install that again i'm going to just query it rpm hyphen query all and then pipe grab telegraph telegraph yes the perfect the rpm is not installed that we wanted which rpm this is the you can do which telegraph like use of bin telegraph that way you can choose or you can see where the binary is located in case you forget you can just type only telegraph it should point to that location standard location binaries so you can just do the chronograph capacitor i think the two more uh, two more um, tools that will be using like chronograph will do also do the same thing w get chronograph pretty quick i think it does uh, won't take that much of time rpm i what i'm doing not rpm <laughs> okay i did a mistake no it's not yet installed i'm, I, I'm confused i missed i skipped the you know portion of installing it please sorry about that mm. yum locally installed chronograph yes yes there you go press yes it's done pretty quick now you can do the rpm that will be the command yes now go to capacitor we'll do the same thing for capacitor i think it's a pretty repetitive but uh, for your sake uh, you can just see what are the components that we're installing it what is the correct rpm that whether it's installed or not what is the correct binary and where to find the binaries like by with the with the help of which command that you can also uh, do enhance on so that will be easier for you it will be handy local install let's do the local installation for capacitor it is not the electrical capacitor that the this is capacitor with the k okay there you go rpm hyphen query capacitor yes this is a correct RPM. i think this is the latest um, rpm that we got from their uh, website and yeah there you go user bin capacitor this is the binary where it is located now what next we should go and how to set now our installation process is over now we'll go to the setup process so let's see the website is there any other steps that we should take care of before starting the service is there any configuration that we should um, you know take care mm -hmm. let's see what does that command give can i directly start it with the default configuration yes why not you should you should be able to do it okay influx d this is the daemon version daemon and you can uh, do ver version is like uh, 2.0 yes you can use uh, service influx db d d you can just mark the difference influx d is the daemon and this influx db is the database db you have to start it once you do the use the service command it will just redirect that to the uh, system control and then uh, you can see it has been started with the port number is 8086 there you go is there anything that i need to take care okay let's go to the website i believe yes yes either you can choose you can change the data path default uh, to some other location that you have because you know your, that default path might have some uh, space limitations okay 
these are the uh, parameters either you can configure in that um, configuration file like atc default influx db2 or you can pass it uh, to the service command like leave system control with argument one or argument two like the user bin influx d command okay once you configure that then uh, we can able to start the service okay yeah, there are two ways we can just do the setup like from the gui like with uh, from the web page you can configure the username password all other sort of thing or there is a cli like a command line interface that you can just do the setup like in flux uh, setup then it it is going to ask for the password username password that you can set okay we we'll just um, going to see the web because web is pretty interesting we will go to the website that is the host name colon 8086 that is the port number that we have started okay what is the username we can give um, something like um, i think admin is best suit okay we will give admin password okay i will type something but i'm going to i'm not going to tell you okay this is password i think re retype the password okay both are matching organization name you can choose your organization name or i'm just um, do influx db and i'm going to choose the bucket as also influx db okay i think um, we are doing the initial user user setup this is uh, not the server setup this is for the user that who is going to log in okay there you go we are almost there we are ready to go okay so what is the quick start then admin version configure letter that we'll see in the next couple of series how to use the influx db user interface for optimizing it the database for querying the database for creating the metrics like um, you know you can also create a, a dashboard also just like grafana Grafana is like you can select the data source from so many other sources but in InfluxDB we can choose the data from the InfluxDB that uh, the server that we have installed just now. So they have provided uh, the user interface like a web framework so that you can just uh, visualize the data that that is there in the InfluxDB. InfluxDB is nothing but the time series data. For every time stamp you need to store the data so that will learn subsequently okay there are a couple of other features that you can just um, play around not play around uh, we will just um, go through together how to use this GUI so this video is not for that we'll cover that in details in the subsequent videos please stay tuned for if you're interested in that okay i think what is the other thing you can get the alert you can get task you can uh, you can customize okay this is the bucket are available that kind of settings you can configure it from here i'm going i'm not going to confuse you right now in this video because this video is uh, for installation and setup so installation is done all the um thing like um, capacitor telegraph and the chronograph and everything has been installed okay i think these are the um, uh, urls that has been provided uh, for, so that we can go through it in the web and we subsequently will see the video so that will be also easier for you okay thanks for watching thanks for your time if you're interested or if you like the videos please like share and uh, subscribe there you go thanks stay tuned bye bye